is there sort of a, I guess my question, is there like a sacrifice when you, if you add more people, do you think there's a certain amount of people that can share this experience and still have it be experiential? I'd like to find that out. I'd like to, um, I think it would be great to do it with like 30 and then go, okay, let's try, like, let's see how, how big it can, can go. And, you know, I mean, what if you got up to 200 in, that come into this space, in a big space, but you could still seat them in a way where you were uh, connected to them. And, I mean, I would like to find out where that line is. That'd be great. See what holds. Yeah. And with the music and the sort of going in this the idea that the story threads it together, and feel free to sort of semi-repeat my question back to me when you answer. Um, uh, my response in the form of a question. Feel free <laughs> oh, <know>. to um, <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, with the music and switching between, speak a little bit to me about the um, going between the story, the music, theatrical elements, and this journey that is sort of morphing constantly, slightly. Is that totally wrong? No. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any? Um, no. <laughs> what did I take that one? That's a, great... uh, that's a great... Is there a question in that? Um, well... How does the music support the text? How's that? How does the actually? music support the text? Can you take that now? Or do you want me to take it again? It's a democracy. I think, I think that there are songs that have been said written about every theme, whether it's loneliness or happiness or fear or eating disorders. And so oh dear, bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you look hard enough and you listen hard enough, then you you find the right song. But there has to be a reason for the song to be in the show though. I mean it's not just there to showcase a voice. There's a specific purpose. For every song, and we we found some beautiful, beautiful songs, and, then and we cut some, yeah, like over the at the beginning of the rehearsal process, yeah. their work and be beautiful, beautiful material. Brad sung it beautifully, had he played it beautifully, but for the shape that the show organically started to take, it was like this doesn't fit. Yeah, Any get rid, rid, rid of it? Can we cut this? And the great thing about Patty and Brad, because I came into the to the process, like whatever, a year in, that there was no preciousness around it. It was all what's going to tell the best story. So it wasn't like, oh, you know, we've been working on this song for a year. Fuck you for cutting it. It was like, no, this isn't. This isn't gonna. This isn't working with what we have now. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Brad's broken up with me a few times over the rehearsal process. <laughs> No, it's, there's, it's, it's not about that. If it doesn't, if it doesn't serve the, uh, the story, um, then there is no, who cares? I mean, literally get rid of it. There's no preciousness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that, you know, you, you finish a show and I have my favorite songs and, and you may have yours depending on what night it is, but people will come up and, and choose a song from the show and you think, Really? That was the one that spoke to you? Isn't that interesting? What's going mm -hmm. on in your life? What secrets are we not talking about? Right. Mm -hmm. It's always surprising to me. Yeah. Yeah. Your relationship brings up a, um, a question that's very interesting to me lately. There are some directors, choreographers, creators who are known to be sort of tyrants, but they, the material ends up with... <clears throat> they. <laughs> I, you told me to say that, Brad. Yeah, I love it. It's great. They say, well, then the material is more rigorous and more challenging, and the um, performers are uh, at the, you know, they're the, whatever, the subservient to this director figure. And then there's the other extreme, which is collective um, creation. And it just seems to me that, and I'm curious to know your thoughts about, let me see if I can find a question in here, um, the relationship in rehearsal bleeding into the content, form bleeding into content, the way in which you've chosen to work become, does that become um, 
part of the show, and can you repeat some of that back so that you're saying it oh, and not me? You uh, spent hours editing your video. I pause for one second. Sure. I'm not. I haven't directed a ton, but I've acted for a long time, and I've been teaching for a long time. And what I what I seem to I think get as a director in some ways for free, and this is also from from working with directors that I really admire who work in this way, is that you can't, a director, a friend, mentor said this to me years ago, you're in trouble if the director is dancing on top of the performer. That basically it's, you, you are subservient to my vision of what this show is, because then it's, you end up having a case where, where I think that you have like these big Broadway shows where if they're touring around and an actor decides that they want to do something different with it, uh, with some piece of the performance, a stage manager will come up to them afterwards and go, no, 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 you've gone off track, you actually have to do what the, what the show is. It's like this cookie cutter sort of format. And that doesn't interest me as a director at all. And it doesn't interest me as, a, as a, an audience member to see something that is that kind of formatted, anodyne, boring. I find it boring. Um, and I think that in, in this process, Brad brings his own life to the show. And Patty brings her own life to the show. And what interests me is on a, on a specific day of rehearsal going, What's, what's there? What's happening right now? And then to tease that out more instead of going, uh, okay, when someone else directs the show, they can actually direct the magic that you actually bring to it, but I want you to do it like this. That doesn't feel to me like anything that is artistically interesting, authentic, nothing. It's completely inorganic and I think that what this process was about a lot is just going what's Brad bringing to the party and drawing more of that out and making it fatter and then adding into it. Does that answer your question? Is that what you were mm -hmm. kind of going for? I think there's also a th um, the idea of the tyrant genius as the director and my, my experience now is that because you've worked with that I have, kind of director, I have, and um, and I think that he was and she. <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> right? <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> then we're safe. Allegedly, a tyrant, and allegedly. But I think what it, what it is, if I if I boil it down as a sensitive guy. I just think, I don't want to be bullied into a good performance. Mm -hmm. I want to find it based on my, my the, the most wholehearted that I can be in a day. And someone who goes, okay, let's, let's, let's do this, sh this scene now. And I think what that does in, in a rehearsal process is it actually informs how the performance is going to be. That on the performance night, I'm not going to be like, well, I'm going to you know, I've got to get backstage and, you know, do some tongue twirls and I, it's about hanging out with the audience and going, hi, I'm really glad that you came. And then they show up and then what we then have is 30 acting partners that, um, it's a, that's ugly, yeah. <laughs> I didn't end that well, but that's okay. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Pat, in conclusion, <laughs> in summary. That's yours. You own it. Yeah. And I think the collective process is a process that interests me now um, more than it did when I was 20 or even 30 uh, because I have more confidence now. Mm. Mm hmm. Said it. 
take my gun out of my mouth. I'm furious. I don't know. I hope we don't have like big KB. <laughs> okay, alright. <laughs> so I like this. Oh no, 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 That's pretty. Yeah, well. It's a prairie thing, right? It's always gum? a prairie thing. Yeah. It's always a prairie thing. And I've heard that if you chew gum, it uh, kicks your... It's just skinnier? <laughs> it kicks your brain to you think you're eating, and so it starts digesting. No, it kicks in your... Whatever the... It's either your parasympathetic or your sym sympathetic nervous system that calms you down, and chewing gum kicks in. Yeah, but what about that? This? The over... That's alright, but you're not This is what I want for Christmas. A facelift? No, I'm kidding. You should get those tape, the tape that you just put in your hairline. The sure you clean tape. Won't it show? Maybe you can get like designer colors. Just go you like that. You have so much hair that it won't there show. There you go. It'd show on me. Maybe. It'd be 